the 2013 Boston Burton bombing shook the world. Moreover, the other suspect is two Muslim immigrants' brother, and one of them was only 19 at the time. Various questions and debate rise on whether they were part of the terrorist organization or just a regular criminal case. Zohar Sarnev was born on July 22, 1993 in Kyrgyzstan. He and older brother named Tamerlan and Sarnev were born in Kalmyk Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic in 1986. Anzar Sarnev, Johar's father, is a Chechen, and Zubaydah Sarneva, his mother, is a Navar. In the years following World War II, the Soviet Union forcefully relocated the Sarnev family from Chechnya to Kyrgyzstan. Johar went to Russia with his family as a kid. Then the Sarnev parents and Johar traveled to the United States on 90 days tourist visa in April 2002. Tamerlan was left in Kyrgyzstan with his uncle Ruslan and came in the United States two years later. Anzar Sarnev asked for asylum, claiming that his links to Chechnya put him in danger of being killed. The family was given lawful permanent residence in 2007. Johar attended Cambridge Park Elementary Schools and the Middle School Program at Cambridge Community Charter School. Because they had never lived in Chechnya, other Chechen American in the neighborhood evidently did not consider the American branch of the family to be truly Chechen, according to some. He was an ardent wrestler and a Greater Boston League Winter All-Star at Cambridge Range and Latin School. In 2011, he graduated from high school and received a 2500 USD scholarship from the city of Cambridge. In September 2011, Sarnev enrolled at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. Sarnev characterized his world perspective as Islam and his personal priorities as career and money on the Russian language social networking site VK. He uploaded links to Islamic websites, footage of warriors in Syria civil conflict, and page campaigning for Chechnya independence. According to the Economist, he seemed much more concerned with sport and cheeseburgers than with religion, at least judging by his Twitter feed. However, according to the Boston Globe, a post on Sarnev's Twitter feed on the day of the 2012 Boston Marathon, a year before the bombings, mentioned a Quran verse often used by radical Muslim clerics and propagandists. He had a 1.09 GPA and had received 7 value marks in 3 semesters, as well as $20,000 unpaid debt to the institutions. George Sarnev and his brother Tamlin Sarnev were convicted of involvement in the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings. Jor was spotted on CCTV near the finish line forcing his way past crowds to the front with a defilled bag containing one of the pressure cooker explosives that will detonate later that day. Sarnev seemed to drop the bag on the ground with the arousing suspicion among onlookers, then watched several marathon runners cross the finish line before rushing away minutes before the bomb exploded. Shortly after the second bomb went off, CCTV showed both Sarnev's brother and the crowd fleeing the site. Following the bombs, Sarnev continued to tweet and advising Boston residents to remain safe. On April 18, 2013, Sarnev and his brother assassinated MIT police officer Sean Collier on the MIT campus in an effort to grab his pistol before fleeing to the Alston district of Boston. The car's owner, however, said he was able to flee while the Sarnev were preoccupied while fueling the vehicle at the cash-only gas station. Through the man's smartphone and the SUV anti-theft monitoring system, police were able to trace the car's whereabouts. The suspect engaged in a gunfight with the police in Watertown after police discovered the stolen SUV and the Honda driven by the brothers in the early hours of April 19. Johar allegedly alluded to cops who were apprehending his brother by driving the stolen SUV towards them. Sarnev drove over Tamlin, dragging him 30 feet beneath the SUV despite the police effort to avoid being hit. Tamlin would later die at a nearby hospital. Thousands of police officers from various adjacent towns, as well as state police, FBI and SWAT teams launched an extraordinary manhunt, searching multiple homes and properties inside 10 block radius. On April 19, the Boston metro region was effectively shut down for the entire day. Sarnev's uncle Ruslan Sarni, who lived in the Montgomery village, Maryland, begged with Sarnev to turn himself in and seek for forgiveness when his name was linked to the explosion on televisions, saying he had embarrassed the family and the Chechen heritage. Sarnes was discovered injured in a boat in a Watertown garden during the manhunt for him on the evening of April 19, less than a quarter mile, 400 meters from where he abandoned the SUV. He was seen getting out of the boat in which he had been hiding in a photograph broadcast the night of his arrest. He was reported as laying on his stomach. 
The revelation that it was unarmed at the time of capture and the description of neck wound by the SWAT team members that identified it as a slicing injury, possibly caused by shrapnel from an explosion, contradict the initial reports that the neck wound was caused by a self-inflicted gunshot due to possible suicide attempt. Sarnev suffered a skull-based fracture as well as injuries to the middle ear, the skull base, the lateral region of his C1 vertebrae, a substantial soft tissue injury and injuries to the pharynx, mouth and a tiny vascular injury according to a doctor who treated him. According to Ray McGovern of Concertum News, Sarnev wrote a message on the inside of the boat saying, the Boston bombings were in retribution of US crimes in places like Iraq and Afghanistan and that the victim of the Boston bombings were collateral damage in the same way innocent victims had been collateral damage in US wars around the world. Sarnif was taken to the Federal Medical Center, Devons, a federal prison near Boston for male inmates who required specialized or long-term medical or mental health care by US Marshal on April 26. On the evening of September 11, 2011, a triple homicide occurred in Waltham, Massachusetts. The case was re-examined after the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings, with authorities claiming that the Sarnoff brothers were possibly responsible for the murders, citing forensic evidence linking them to the crime scene, and their cell phone records indicating that they were in the area at the time of the bombings. Ibrahim Todeshev, a 27-year-old Chechen native and former mixed martial arts fighter who knew Tamlin Sarnoff, was shot and murdered in Orlando, Florida by police officials who were questioning him about bombs and the Walter murders in May 2013. According to the FBI, Todashev made remarks soon before his death implicating both himself and Tamlin Sarnev in the Walter killings, claiming that the first crime was a drug-related robbery and the murder were conducted to avoid being recognized by victims. Sarnev was the subject of a Rolling Stone cover story headline in the August 2013 issue. It might also serve a motivation for persons who are mentally ill to do something in order to get on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. Matt Tybee, a Rolling Stone columnist, chastised readers who were offended by the cover, claiming that they link Rolling Stone with glamour rather than reporting. The editor of Rolling Stones responded with following, Our hearts go to the Boston Marathon bombings victim, and our sympathies are with them and their families at all times. Rolling Stone long-standing dedication to serious and insightful coverage of the most significant political and cultural topics of our day is reflected in the cover story we are publishing this week. After doubling news that sells to 120,000 copies, Edwin Magazine named the cover the hottest of the year. Because the Justice Department asserted Miranda public safety exemption, Sarnev was first questioned without being told his Miranda right. Sarnev later stopped talking after being read his Miranda rights and refusing to continue cooperating with the inquiry. Initially, prosecutors claimed that the public safety exception should be applied to comments taken before Miranda rights were read. Prosecutors in the Middlesex County have also charged Sarnev with the murder of Sean Collier. Jar claims that the internet videos by Anwar An Awlaki, who also inspired Faisal Shahzad, the perpetrator of the Times Square car bombing attempt in 2010, influenced him. Investigators have uncovered no proof that Sarnev was involved in any terrorist activity thus far and now think that, unlike his brother Tamlin, Johar was never really radicalized, according to the Wall Street Journal. Sarnev fits the psychological profile of a regular criminal rather than a dedicated terrorist. CBS News senior correspondent John Miller said on May 16, 2013, on CBS This Morning that he had been told that Sarnev wrote a note claiming responsibility for the April 15 marathon attack while hiding in the book. During his appearance on the morning program, Miller stated that the note will be a key piece of evidence in any Johar prosecution, that it is absolutely admissible, and that it presents a clear picture of the brother's purpose consisting with what he told authorities while in jail. On July 10, 2013, Sarnev was arraigned in the federal court in the Boston before U.S. Magistrate Judge Marion Boldo on 30 charges, including four counts of murder. He pled not guilty on all 30 charges, including using and conspiring to use a weapon of mass destruction that caused death. United States Attorney General Eric Holder declared on January 30, 2014 that Sarnif will face the death sentence if convicted. When the government refused to rule out the prospect of the death sentence, a plea agreement fell down. Sarnif pled not guilty to all 30 accusations against him when the trial began on January 5, 2015. Sarnif lawyer Judy Clark agreed in her opening statement that Sarnif committed the crimes in question but argued that his brother Tamlin was the mastermind behind them, avoiding the death penalty. 
Sarnoff was convicted guilty on all 30 charges of the indictment on April 8, 2015. Sarnoff was sentenced to death after being charged with using a weapon of mass destruction that resulted in killing as well as aiding and abetting. Martin Richard's parent, Bill and Dennis Richard, the youngest of the three persons murdered in the bombing and one of the two victims killed by Johar Explosive, and other being Chinese exchange students Ling Zilu, spoke out against Sarnoff's death sentence. They said that the lengthy appeal process will compel them to relive that day over and over again and that they would rather see Sarnev spend the rest of his life in jail without the prospect of parole and therefore forfeit his right to appeal. On May 4, 2015, Sarnev, who had shown little emotion during his trial, appeared to cry when his relatives testified. Sarnev was condemned to die by lethal injection in six of the 17 capital offences by a jury on May 15, 2015. Three of the jurors concluded Sarnev took part in the attack because of his brother's influence, according to the verdict forms. Sarnev confronted his victims in court on June 24, 2015, and his death sentence was finally handed. Victims and their relatives were given the opportunity to provide impact statement to the court, and Sarnev, who had been mute during his month-long trial, apologized to those who had been hurt or died as a result of the explosions. Sarnoff was taken to the United States Penitentiary, Florence High in Colorado, the next morning on June 25, 2015. As of July 17, 2015, he has been transferred to ADX Florence. Sarnoff appealed his sentence, claiming that the trial should not have been held in Boston, that jury selection errors occurred, and that the judge improperly excluded evidence that Hamlin Sarnoff and another man, Ibrahim Todeshev, had committed a prior triple murder in Waltham on September 11, 2011, arguing that such evidence would suggest that Johar Sarnoff act under the influence of Hamlin Sarnoff and was possibly afraid of what would happen to him if he refused. On December 12, 2019, the three-judge panel of the First Circuit heard the appeal. The First Circuit reversed the death sentence and three additional convictions on July 31, 2020, saying that the judge failed to evaluate how much prospective jurors were aware of the event during jury selection and ordered a new jury trial for the punishment phase of his trial. The Supreme Court agreed to hear an appeal from the Department of Justice on March 22, 2021, and on October 13, 2021, the Department of Justice submitted reasons in support of Sarnoff death punishment being reinstated. As of now, Johar Sarnev was still alive and being prisoned in the ADX Florence. The end result of his trial after the 2013 Boston bombing marathon is still ongoing till today.